Um, but you do, you forget. Like, and LA makes you, like there have been times, like I was in New York City with Fern's sister recently. And there are times, Justin, I feel, I feel a little successful, you know? I've, I've achieved some things, I've gotten some degrees, I've built a business. Fern ass was like, uh, my sister's having dinner, you wanna, you wanna come have dinner at the house? Sure. She gives me the address. Now, I don't know nothing about New York City. It's on the Upper East Side, Park Avenue. Oh, yeah. Hey. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know about I'm in an Uber. You know, you, when you start your journey in, like, Harlem. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the Uber, <laughs> you start noticing, like, when I got to about 72nd Street, like, and this is how tripped out it was. The Uber pulls up in front of the, in front of the building where Fern's sister lives, and this dude came out to the car and let me out. I was like, how you know I'm here for this house? He literally uh, asked no questions. He just walked up to the door, opened the door. And I'm like, bro, I could have just been Ubering to this neighborhood. Like, he, right. he rings me into the building and I'm standing there and I'm going through my phone to try to find out what apartment it was. This guy looks at me and he goes, Mr. Connie? I'm like, bro, <laughs> what is, I don't say nothing. Mr. Connie, they're waiting for you. Send me upstairs. And I saw the most beautiful apartment overlooking Park Avenue. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Central, All right. Central Park. Okay. And I, st- I forgot. House that- party. <laughs> <laughs> House party four, five, whatever it is. All right. And I forgot for a minute that, like, you start comparing yourself to these other people who have this. And L.A. will do that to you. You know, like, L.A., it's, I rent cars everywhere. I fly all around the world. I rent cars. I come to LA and I'm like, I can't have a Corolla. Like, can you? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, right. You know what I mean? Like, but it's, it's my point though, it's easy for him to forget how amazing his life and career have been. And it's yeah. wonderful to hear him say how much he's had to like, remember, like, I started in a TV show. Like, yeah, you have to check yourself, man. And, and you do have to remind yourself, like, of your accomplishments. Because if you don't, you'll just kind of look at everybody else and be like, you'll feel like you haven't done enough or you haven't done anything. But that's not the actual reality. I mean, because, I mean, all of us, where we're at, where we're at right now is only because all of the success and failures of what was in our past. But we overcame and achieved so much to even get to right here. Yes. And so we have to look at all of those things and remind ourselves so we don't be like, dang, I ain't did nothing. Like, you know, I ain't, I ain't where I want to be at, you know. But it's like we've done we've done a, a good amount of things. All Everyone here and everyone that's watching. That's, so what happens if you go into every single session and you view your client as an overcomer? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't matter if, like, a addiction or you know, an an access to diagnosis or whatever it is. Like if you just say, you woke up this morning, put your shoes on with all of the things going on and you came to see a helping professional, I'm gonna treat you as somebody who has habitually overcome things. Because what Justin just said is brilliant and true. Adam and I have been trying to say this for 20 years. Every single person is undefeated against every obstacle they've ever faced. Every single person. But we treat them like the obstacles matter when they don't actually. What matters is your habitual ability to overcome obstacles. Mm. And every single person can do that.